everyone, it's Caribbean E. Welcome to the channel. Hope everybody's been having a wonderful day, everything is going great, and that you're in the best of health, and that you're in a place of safety. Today I'm coming with another inspirational talk, and I want to talk about a storm, okay? I want to talk about a storm, and I'm going to do it quickly, and I want to go quickly to the Bible, Acts the 27th chapter. Acts the 27th chapter, beginning at the first verse, and it says, And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, and they delivered Paul the centurion and other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. Now, Apostle Paul was an apostle, but he was considered a prisoner and had other prisoners with him. They put him on this boat, and he had to sail to a certain point to stand before um, Julius, or stand, or stand before this judge who was going to judge him for the things that he'd done. Um, I want to go quickly to another verse, which is number 10, and it says, And when he said to him, Sirs, I perceive that this forge will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lady of the ship, but also of our lives. This wasn't the best time to sail. This was the best time to head out to sea. But they had to set out because they had the prisoners and they had to transport them to where they needed to be, okay? But, and he's telling them that there's going to be danger, this is the rough time to sail, and this also reminds me of that movie, The Perfect Storm, okay? Where the fishermen was pressured to catch fish, okay? And they went out there and they got some great fish, they was doing good, everybody was happy, but when it's time to come back, a decision was made. Should we go back because there's some gale force winds, um, there's some 30 foot waves, and um, we got some tough weather to get back, get all this fish back. So should we stay here and then do it and wait for the storm to pass? No, they decided to try to get back to Gloucester. These fishermen were from Gloucester. It's a true story. Um, for the most part, they never made it back. They made a bad decision. They should have stayed there. And at the end of the story, they all drowned, all died, six souls lost because of fish. Now, I want to go to 11 verse quickly too. Nevertheless, Satyrian believed that the master and the owner of the ship more than these things were spoken by Paul. So a lot of people didn't believe Paul. They thought he was crazy, out of his mind, you a prisoner. We were not going to accept your opinion. Okay? Verse 15, which is the last verse that I want to read. Um, and when the ship was caught, it could not bear up into the wind, and we let her drive. Because now they're sailing, trying to get to the certain point, and now the waves are fierce, the waves are rocking the ship, and there was so much that went on in this whole story. You can go back and read it for yourself. Whole 27th chapter of the book of Acts, I'm just trying to get through it quickly, okay? But I want to let you know that in the midst of every storm, there's always good. There's always good. So today, I wanted just to encourage my brothers and sisters and you from all over the land or wherever you may be. I want to encourage you while you're in quarantine in your homes. You got time to think, read some books, cook some good meals, uh, maybe do some house cleaning. And just, just refocus, just refocus and just reset, okay? Um, and this story, though, Acts 27, chapter of the book of Acts, um, it, it's, it's, you learn how to swim um, without dying because there was on water, okay? And, uh, and I believe that good is coming out of this. Even with this coronavirus 19, I believe that's good that's coming out of this in due time and due season. Uh, it ain't all bad, but good is coming out of this, okay? And I look at the, the, the checks that the government is sending people I heard the government is twelve. They sent in twelve hundred dollar checks. Everybody uh, that's unemployed. I don't believe there's nowhere near enough. Okay, but we'll see what happens. But a little bit is certainly better than nothing. Okay, um, so good is coming out of this. Um, everybody responds differently when going through a storm. Everybody responds differently. Everybody has different mindset, so they respond differently. Some go to grocery stores, stock up, clear the shelves get some toilet paper, get some hand wash, get some sanitizers, get some chicken, get some, get some uh, 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 steaks, maybe get some ground beef. The things that you need that's going to 
cover you and keep you during this time that you're in quarantine. While others will stand in a line for three hours uh, at the dispensary uh, to stock up on their weed, okay? And to smoke weed while and party while they're in quarantine. So I also like to take this moment and pray for the homeless, okay? Because the homeless have no covering, they have no shelter from this virus, okay? And there's thousands and thousands and millions of people that's homeless, starting with California, uh, to Las Vegas, to New York City, Philly, DC, New York City, all those places, a lot of people are homeless in Chicago, Detroit, freezing, homeless, with no place to go, okay? I wanna see how society gonna handle that too. I wanna see how they're gonna handle that. So. Um, these people that are homeless cannot escape the virus. If it comes, it's going to be a horrible situation, okay? So, but I'd like to give you some pointers in this message about storms. The first point I want to give, give to you is never allow fear and worry to control your life. Because once fear and worry begin to control your life, you can't think normally. You begin to get medical issues, your blood pressure goes up, you can't think straight because it's all about fear and worry. What am I gonna do? What's gonna happen? All these things. Don't forget, in the midst of every storm, God is still in control, complete control. I remember a story about Peter. Um, when Jesus had told the disciples, get on a boat, go to the other side of the lake. I'll find you, I'll catch you, I'll see you guys there. So in the middle of the night, there was a person walking on the water. And Peter looked out and said, Lord, is that you? You know, because he seen him walking on the water. And he said, never seen nobody walk on the water before. And he said, yeah, that's He said, yeah, this is me. He said, but if that be you, bid me to walk, come, to come to you, to walk on the water with you. And then Jesus looked to him and said, come. So Peter stepped out the boat and we started walking. And as he started walking, he was doing good for a moment. And then began, he began to look down and see the depth of the water, and he began to sink. And the more fear set in, he began to sink deeper and deeper until he had to reach his hands, face his head under water. He reached up and said, Lord, save me. The Lord had to reach down and pull him back up. And so, oh, ye of little faith. Because as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus and kept walking, he didn't have to worry about the depths and to worry about the depths of the sea. He was able to get to Jesus because, because he was saved. Peter would be saved. Okay, that's just another story that I want you guys to see because he took his eyes off of God. We need to keep our eyes on God because he's the author and finish of our faith during these troubled times, okay? I know this is the biggest inconvenience to a lot of people. A lot of people put a lot of money in going on trips. Some's going to Europe. Some's going to Italy, Spain. But these cities are on lockdown because of this virus. A lot of things are happening. Life, as you once know, is changing quickly before your very eyes. Okay, so God always speaks through storms. Okay, and storms also bring people together. People are getting now like I've never seen before community, reaching out, knocking on doors, calling people, see how they're doing. That's a beautiful thing. Situations happen, always bring people together at some point. Okay, that we all can survive together. It ain't just about my four and no more, but it's about for all as a community surviving together. So, in the midst of this storm, in the midst of the storm of the virus, okay, this is your time of adjustment. You get a chance to sit home, you can think about what you're going to do, you can think about your plans, your financial plans, how you're going to do this, how you're going to do that. You have time to make some adjustments now, okay? You ain't got time for a lot of drama, you ain't got time for a lot of foolishness, but this is your time while you're sitting home, you're not at work that you can think through a lot of things, you can put some things into perspective, um, and you can really, really just, just sit back and just think and just reflect, okay? People are complaining that they can't go to church. Well, last time I checked, you are the church. You are the church that Jesus come back for. The body of Christ was in you. The kingdom of God is within you. The church is just a building. And then some churches are just a social center, a social gathering that people can come together and they can just have some, some donuts, some coffee, or things like that. But then there's some churches that actually really do ministry and there's some churches that actually just cover sugarcoat and compromise. And hopefully these pastors that are doing that, they get a chance to think too because now while we go through this virus, their, their sanctuaries are empty. 
Okay, they have to do uh, the online stuff. They got to do the, uh, the uh, Sunday services uh, through via video. Okay, but for the most part, their sanctuaries and their uh, auditoriums are empty. Okay, and I tell you what, if God don't send the people back, they'll be empty. They won't be pastors. They'll be just a regular person. Okay, so it's just something to think about. So the church is just a building. We gather there for fellowship. And that's what God intended to be, hearing of the word and, and listening to what God is saying. So now, this is a season now that we need to breathe, just relax, okay? And as we get through this, we will get through this in a timely manner. Because to everything, there is a season. To everything, there is a season, okay? So uh, I've seen hundreds of young people. Now you've seen them, I've seen them. They're on the news, they're on the beach partying. Everybody's hanging out, they're drinking in the bars, all these kind of, like nothing is going on. Because you know how young people are. They don't think about today, they don't think about tomorrow, they just think about right now, okay? They can affect a lot of people, they can bring, get a lot of germs, they're all close to each other, all hugged up, and they don't care about anything. So, the, 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 the CDC uh, person that was on the news telling people, hey, you need to take this thing seriously because this is taking a lot of people out. So. This storm of virus will pass soon. In due time, it's going to pass. And it's going to be just a memory of the past. Just like that storm in, uh, uh, I think it was in 1918, that took a lot of people. We all must listen to the instructions, though. I encourage you to listen to the instruction of CDC and the authorities to, to get us all through it, okay? And uh, of the storm until we get through it. And in this story about Paul, I'm glad that the angel of the Lord spoke to him. And this is the powerful ending of the story. The angel of the Lord spoke to Paul and said, except these abide in the ship, none can be saved. Because when the storm got fierce and they was in the boat, everybody was ready to abandon deck and jump off the boat and try to swim to land as fur as fast and quickly as possible, okay? At one point, they began to lighten the load of the ship because it was too heavy, so they began to throw things overboard, the things that they didn't need, the things that they didn't want. They began to get rid of that junk, like we need to do the same thing while we're sitting back, relaxing and chilling, some of that stuff that we don't need, throw it in the trash can, but get rid of the downsides and get rid of some stuff, and maybe it'll lighten your load on life. Some of that worry and frustration and anger and bitterness and unforgiveness in our hearts and these other things that we do that's not pertaining to the kingdom of God. We need to get rid of that stuff and throw it off and lighten our burden, lay aside every weight and sin which so easy beset us and run the race which was set before us. That'd be a good thing to do. That's a good point. That'd be a good thing to do while we're sitting back reflecting and we're home and we're in quarantine. Let some things in your life go and release it. Some bad relationships, some bad friends, all these things that we no longer need even be going through our minds. Get rid of the junk. This is a big good time to do it. Refocus, recharge, recover. And when this is over, you can be the better you as you begin to begin your life again anew. So this angel spoke to Paul and said, Paul, except these abide in the ship, they won't be saved. Yes, the ship is going down, but I have a plan for their lives. That to me, because the ship going down, everybody's going to die. Yes, the ship got to go. The ship got to be destroyed. But the people that's on the ship, I'm going to save them. I'm going to keep them from falling. Okay, so what happened in this story is um, the ship fell apart, hit some rocks, and the, 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 the word was given to Paul, tell the people to grab a piece of the ship and paddle on it to shore. As long as you got a piece of the ship, you can make it to safety. The ones that didn't drown, but the ones that did, they listened, they grabbed a piece of that ship, but it was all broken up, busted up, they made it to shore. When they got to shore, they met some other people, they was able to be refreshed, they had a good time of fellowship, there was some healing going on, there was some food, there was a celebration. So this perhaps what God is saying, after this is all over, after you've been laid off, after you've lost your job, whether you're a casino worker, whether you're a sanitation worker, whether you make up beds in hotels, helping this land off thousands of people, the Marriott land off thousands of people, after you recover from this, 
get your broken piece from your storm. Get your broken piece, make it back to shore, and start anew. Because I'm telling you something, there is a better day that's coming. Things may look dim today, but I declare unto you today, my brothers and sisters, God's tomorrow has got to be better than today. So I just wanted to share that story with you today about Paul and the sinking ship because everything that goes down eventually will come up if God is in it, okay? If God be for you, then who can be against you? So um, I want to encourage you that if that's home, that's getting some kind of income tax check or get some kind of or get some kind of money that you can pay your bills. I hope that you got some beans and rice or something that's going to cover you. Sit back and relax and know that God is with you. He promised to never leave us. He promised to never forsake us. And that's what my mind is right now. That's what my heart is right now because this is a life-changing moment for a lot of people all over, not just the United States, but in countries and bios all over the place, in Africa and things like this, it's affecting a whole lot of people. But if you can just hold on to God and trust God and believe God to get you through this, I believe, my brothers and sisters, that you can make it through this storm. Okay? So storms weren't made to take you out, but storms were made to bring you out. So, like I always say on the channel, in the meantime, between the time, remember, life to be enjoyed, continue to subscribe to the channel, continue the notification, and we'll see you on the next video. And may God bless you, and may God keep you, and may God comfort you through these turbulent times. Amen, brothers and sisters.